Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, Co-Chair and members of the eminent group of advocates of SDGs, ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful to the organizers of this year European Days Conference for the invitation and the opportunity to address this gathering on the theme, Making Gender and the Youth the Private Sector's Business. A central objective of this conference has to be to define a strategy to combat global poverty. That too is the goal of the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, i.e. Pro promoting global development that leaves no one behind. I'm honored by the decision of the new United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres to appoint me as co-chair of the UN Sustainable Development Goals Advocates Group of Eminent Personalities. In succession to my predecessor, His Excellent John Dramani Mahama, it is a mark of trust in Ghana's leaders which honors the Ghanaian people and for, for which they are grateful. My duty and that of all the members of the Advocates Group is to mobilize political support for the realization of these goals. It is worth noting that SDG number five talks about achieving gender equality and empowering all women and girls. Another of the SDGs, number nine, also aims at building resilient infrastructure, promoting sustainable industrialization, and fostering innovation. These two goals clearly have specific demographics of our populations in mind, our women and the youth. In Ghana, 51% of our population is female. The last census of our country has it that 73% of our population is below the age of 35. These statistics are also representative of the African condition and mean that the empowerment of our women and youth constitute fundamental challenges for our development. That is the surest way of rooting our poverty and guaranteeing the progress and prosperity of our continent and country. This so-called youth bulge provides immense opportunities for rapid economic development. Ghana's economy, like most of the economies of Africa, has remained structurally rigid, rigid since colonialism, depending largely on the exports of primary co commodities, such as in the case of Ghana, gold, cocoa, bauxite, and timber. There can be no future prosperity in the short, medium, or long term if we continue to maintain this economic structure. Unless we industrialize, with the goal of adding significant value to our primary products, we cannot create the necessary numbers of high-paying jobs that will enhance the living standards of the masses of our country, our women and youth. It is for this reason that my government's priority is to build the most business-friendly and people-friendly economy in Africa, which will create jobs and prosperity for Ghanaians. And this we intend to do through private sector empowerment. Over the last five months, the length of stay of my government in office, we have introduced measures to stimulate the private sector through the introduction of a monetary policy that will stabilize the currency and reduce significantly the cost of borrowing, in addition to a raft of tax cuts to bring relief and to encourage businesses. These interventions will shift the focus of Ghana's economy from taxation to production and hopefully will make Ghanaian businesses very competitive in West Africa, Africa and beyond. It is the competitiveness of our enterprises in the agricultural and manufacturing sectors that will determine our capacity to create wealth for our youth and women and wealth in our society. The competitiveness of Ghana's private sector is key to addressing issues of inclusion, economic development, and growth of Ghana. That is the only way we can build a Ghana beyond aid. That is freeing our people from a mindset of dependence, aid, charity, and handouts, and building a self-reliant economy which will mobilize the immense resources of Ghana, material and human, with women and youth in the forefront to resolve Ghana's problems. Whilst we empower the private sector to create jobs and wealth, my government, recognizing the benefits of the digital revolution, 
has instituted measures to keep the youth in touch with global trends and also equipped them with the skills which together with their sense of enterprise and innovation will be necessary in Ghana's economic transformation. That is the focus of my government. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I believe this summit should afford participants an opportunity to share ideas and create also a platform for deliberation on the development of so solutions to private sector and enterprise development in the world. Further, it should be a platform for limitless thinking and an environment for strong network building. Its outcome should be to define concrete strategies for making gender and the youth the private sector's business. Thank you for your time and attention.